So in the previous video, we talked about how we can implement probabilistic routing, like what we see here, and uh, also conditional routing and compound conditional and probabilistic routing using uh, selection weights. Um, in this video, we're going to make a, a little modification to our system. So now, instead of having uh, one server with three uh, uh, units of capacity, we're going to consider three separate server objects uh, for the uh, document check uh, station. Uh, so each of these servers uh, will have its own queue. And what we would like to do here is to dynamically uh, choose which server uh, the entity wants to go to. So uh, let's go to Simio and see how we can implement this. So this is our uh, model from the previous video. So what I need to do is remove this uh, server that has three uh, units of capacity. So uh, when I run this model, what happens is entities wait in this queue and whenever it uh, unit of capacity becomes available, uh, the first entity in the queue is moved to the uh, processing station of the server and it's processed. So I'm maintaining first in, first out uh, through uh, among all my entities here. Now the implication of having three parallel uh, or separate uh, server objects is that each will have its own queue and uh, the entity preferably wants to sh uh, choose the one that is expected to to be faster uh, in terms of the waiting time in the queue. So we may not have first in uh, or uh, an absolute first in first out uh, uh, system anymore. So uh, let me remove this uh, server object and add three server objects. So these are the three uh, document checks. So doc check one, doc check two, and doc check three. So I'm just going to um, connect my source using paths to the three servers. And also note that since from each of these we have this probabilistic routing to the AIT and pre-check, uh, we can either add two paths that go from the first station to AIT and the second one that goes from the first station to uh, the pre-check, or alternatively uh, we can use a transfer node that does this for us. So what I'm going to do is connect my servers to this transfer node that I just added to my model. And then I'm going to connect my transfer node to AIT and pre-check and have my probabilities on these two paths right here. So I have a probability of 0.9 to go to the advanced imaging technology for regular uh, passengers and I have a probability of uh, 0.1 to go to the pre-check. So basically 10% of my passengers are eligible for uh, pre-check. So um, now if I run the model what we expect to see is that uh, the three servers are selected randomly. So what happens is that we expect to see roughly about the same utilization for all three servers. So the arrivals will be uh, randomly but equally divided between the three uh, servers, if you will. So, so this is not what we want. What we want is that when an entity is about to, uh, or when an entity arrives, the entity wants to choose uh, a server that is expected to become available first. So we need something we, we call dynamic routing and the way we do it in Simio is using note lists. So if I go to my model and definitions and then lists, here I can add a note list, a note list and as you can see I have a drop-down menu that 
that lists my notes, my input notes uh, in my model. So I'm going to have um, input at check one, input at check two, input at check three. It looks like I have a typo here uh, in my name uh, for the server. So let me go back and uh, fix the typo here. Check two. So now I go back to my list and I have uh, input at doc check two. Oh, it's still not fixed. There we go. So doc check one, two, and three. Um, alternatively, to make this note list, I could select my three input nodes that I would like to have in my note list, right click. So I'm, I have selected all three in the multi selection mode by holding down uh, the control key. And then I can add to note, note list and then create a new note list. And you can uh, give it a name, say OK. So now when I go to definitions in my list, I see the second note list that uh, I just created by uh, using the shortcut method. So again, um, the two note lists that I, I have here are exactly the same. So I'm just going to remove one of them. Um, so now when I click on the output node of the source and in the properties you will see that we have an entity destination type property that is set to continue which is what we uh, have used so far. Uh, in the previous models and basically what it says is just continue using the selection weights. Now if, if I click on this little arrow you will see that we have other options. So we have seen sequences before and uh, we're going to talk about sequences in more detail in the next video in this lab. Um, we have the select from list which is what we're going to do in this lab. We can also use specific or custom routing groups. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is select from list and Simio gives me this error that says well you haven't specified which list you would like to use so I'm going to select the uh, note list name which is my note list one that consists of these three input nodes and I also have three properties for uh, how I, I would like to choose from my list. So I have the selection goal, selection condition, uh, block destination rule. In this lab we're going to uh, focus on the selection goal, which is defaulted to preferred order. So the preferred order says, well, I have listed my nodes in this order. So I'm just going to uh, check the first one if it's available or if, it's, if it has capacity, I will send my entity there. And then if not, I will send it to the second one. If the second one has, has no uh, remaining capacity, then I will send it to the third one. So when I run this model, what we see is that all of the entities are routed to the first uh, station. And none of them is routed to the other two. And that's because we have this station listed in, uh, in the first row of our list. But the reason that all of them go here is that we essentially have infinite capacity in our first uh, server because the input buffer size is set to uh, infinity. So the capacity of my input buffer is infinity, so this server always has capacity. So when I'm selecting based on the preferred order, I'm always sending my entities to the first station. So now, uh, in order to see how this uh, preferred order uh, selection goal works, I'm going to uh, select all my three servers and then set the buffer capacities, the input buffer capacities to zero. So now what happens, and I'm going to run in the step, in the step mode, uh, is when my first entity arrives, it checks the first server and since it has uh, capacity available, it goes to the first server. When the second entity arrives, the first server has no remaining capacity because the processing station is already busy and the input buffer capacity is zero. So it will go to the second station, as you can see. The third entity will be routed to the third station because uh, the capacity of, there is no remaining capacity in the second one and so on. So when we run this model right now, uh, what we see is uh, the output buffer of the source is used as uh, a, the queue 
and then whenever one of these servers become um, becomes available we send the entity um, that the first entity in the line to the first server that becomes available also note that uh, this process works if I increase the buffer capacity so let's say I have a buffer capacity of 4 so now what I expect to see is that first let me slow down the model a little bit so what I expect to see is that Simio will first fill the first capacity uh, of this first server and once the ser first server has no remaining capacity that means uh, in the input buffer or its uh, processing station, it starts filling up the uh, second server. And then when the second server is filled up, it sends the entities to the third server. So let's run the model and see if it's, uh, see that ha uh, how that happens in, in Simio. So as you can see, the entities are first uh, sent to the first server. When the first server has four entities in the queue, uh, they're sent to the second server. and when, and when in fact, if you run long enough, and uh, you will see that this, and we just saw that. So when the second server becomes filled up, uh, the entities are routed to the third server. And of course, we can go back to our uh, list and change the uh, sequence of, of the nodes in our list however we want. So that's the order preferred selection goal. And um, let me go ahead and talk about a couple of uh, other options that we have here. So if I open uh, this drop down menu, you will see that we have smallest distance, largest distance, cyclic, random, and so on. What I would like to talk about now is the smallest value as a selection goal. And the selection expression is defaulted to candidate.note.associated station overload. So what it tells me is that I'm going to uh, select from my candidate nodes the one that has the smallest value of associated station overload. So the station that has the minimum overload. So let's see how Simio defines this overload by going to Simio's help and then search for associated station overload. And in fact, when you do that, I'm going to go to functions, states and events for uh, node objects. Let me scroll down here a little bit. As you can see, we have a description for what this associated station overload expression uh, is. So basically what it does, it returns the difference between the load and capacity values. So it's a positive difference indicating and what Simio calls the overload of this station. So the load of this station is defined as the sum of the current entities en route to the node intending to enter this station, plus the current entities already arrived to the node but still waiting to enter this station, plus the current entities occupying this station. So that's how Simio defines the load and then the overload will simply be uh, the load minus the current capacity. So let me close the help uh, and go back to the model and uh, run this model. Remember we have four units of capacity uh, at the input. So uh, basically we have a capa input buffer capacities at four. So what the preferred order selection goal would do for us as, you, as we just saw is that it only sends entities to the second uh, node in my list when the first one has reached its capacity. It has no remaining capacity in the station, in the processing station, and in its uh, input buffer. But what the uh, smallest value of associated station overload does for us is that it sends the entities uh, to the station that has the fewest entities in its uh, processing station, input buffer, and en route to the station. So now when we run, we will see that we, d we do not wait uh, until the first server is filled to send entities to the second station. So the last dynamic routing option that we're going to look at in this lab is uh, an option that allows us to choose uh, the server that has the fewest entities in the buffer. So this time we're going to select the destination uh, node 
for our entities based on exclusively the input buffer and the number of entities that are waiting in that queue. So in order to do this, what we need is to change our expression from associated station overload uh, to associated station dot contents. So now the associated uh, associated station is our input buffers, input nodes, and we're specifically look at, looking at its contents, which returns um, the number of entities that are waiting in the input buffer. Um, so when we have candidate node associated station dot contents, we're looking at all of our candidate nodes and we compare the number of uh, entities in the queue and then we pick the server that has the minimum number in queue. So now when I run this model, you will see that uh, I'm exclusively uh, choosing based on the number in queue. So it is possible that when, when I have multiple entities en route to the station, since they haven't gotten to the input buffer yet, I still send the next uh, entity to the same station. Uh, however, this uh, process works if, even if I have infinite input buffer capacity. So infinity for all. So now when I run, you will see that while the other two methods that we covered uh, do not work for infinite uh, buffer capacities because they result in an inf infinite total capacity for the servers. Uh, this uh, approach, however, works even if we have infinite buffer capacities.